<laughs> At, uh, I uh, started there September 3rd. On September the 10th, we transitioned the hotel. And the next day was September 11th, 2001. So, <laughs> um, we had to think pretty quick on our feet, you know, uh, because uh, those of us that were in the field at that time, um, it, was, uh, it was really like a, uh, like a movie, being in a movie, you know, when you see uh, the train stations, like cancel, 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 cancel. Except that it was pieces of business, 30,000, 60,000, 80,000, 100,000, you know. Um, so, um, with uh, declining revenues like that, I mean, you know, Hopefully, everybody was born in 2001 in this room. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, was, uh, it was a tough go. And it changed, uh, changed the world forever in, uh, in the way we do business in North America. And um, I was uh, on the phone yesterday with some people from CSIS. Uh, I won't bore you with the details. But, you know, uh, the, uh, one of the, uh, the, the main driver that, that's behind a lot of the agencies right now is the fact that in Canada, we don't know what the face of terror is, you know. Anyway. But um, it really changed the world, and it created so much paranoia. You know, I hate removing my shoes when I go, and when I go uh, you know, to board a plane, right? Who likes it? But anyway, um, at the end of the day, you know, it was a very interesting thing to do, because I was a newcomer to Victoria 10 years ago. I still am now. Uh, but uh, the point here is that you're, we were then faced with restructuring. Um, and uh, how do you do that in a small community? Um, and the answer is with dignity. You know, when you, have to, uh, when you have to sit down with someone and look at them in the eyes and talk about livelihood and how it is that, uh, that you know, um, difficult news have to be shared, um, it's not fun, you know? Um, but I will always make the tough decisions and, uh, you know, the, those were all for the right reasons. And uh, I'm smiling because I'm thinking about one person in particular. Her name is Marion, and I had to go through that with her, and I had tea with her, uh, you know, uh, near, uh, not too long ago. And, uh, you know, obviously there is no scar. Uh, so to me, that's always validation that we've done it properly there at the time. So uh, at any rate, I was there for just, to, just about a year. And, um, and then the uh, story of my life, my vice president came to see me and they asked me to go to Moncton, New Brunswick. I said, what did I do? <laughs> you know? so, um, so I'm one of the three yahoos that left Victoria to go to Moncton in New Brunswick. Um, and um, Moncton is an ugly city, but it's a beautiful community, you know. Um, and uh, I've been very impressed with uh, the uh, people in the Maritimes in all provinces there. Um, and uh, let me tell you, um, you know, um, I, uh, I was very happy there. We were very happy there, uh, working in Moncton. I got, so basically I was sent to Moncton. Uh, it's a bilingual province, as you may know. Moncton is definitely bilingual in the way that they operate and whatnot. Um, and the mandate, really, uh, there that uh, I was charged with had nothing to do with the business. It had everything to do with the community. Um, I was the, uh, the fourth general manager there in two years, so I mean, um, it, was, um, it was very uh, interesting, you know. Uh, the, the hotel does not have a good corporate name in the community. Um, so I did everything, except pouring coffee at Tim Hortons at 6.30 in the morning for the hockey teams, you know. But uh, I was really involved with everything, and, and the biggest driver of business out there was not through revenue management. It was not through looking at the rev bar and the, and the, comp, and the comp set. It was not through breakthrough in service. It was not. You know what it was? It was through community involvement and my positioning in this community out there. Well, when I left Moncton, I was invited and they presented me with the keys to the city, you know, and okay, well, Thank you very much. It was a very humbling experience, as you can appreciate. But how did that happen? You know, we had a homelessness issue out there. Have you heard of that here? Um, it's, it's, and homelessness is very complex. You know, um, here we have the climate uh, that, again, you know, is 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 a compelling issues as it relates to the volume of people that we have on the streets. But. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and I just want to add one thing here is that homelessness and panhandling are two different issues, okay? 
um, and I wish we could do something about panhandling here in such a wonderful tourism destination because it scares people away, you know. Uh, and it's uh, it's a fact, you know. I uh, last year, um, and that's not new. My predecessor, Roger, Roger Stone, which most of you probably know, wonderful man who is now the general manager at the Fairmont in Whistler. Um, him and I share the same views with that. Um, last year, we flew people here, international association uh, from uh, the states, from uh, Houston, uh, wined them, dined them, uh, you know, uh, went through everything. They had the pen on the paper for the contract, you know. They had their pen on paper, $480,000 piece of business. At the end of the last day, they go to, uh, to have a nice pint great idea over at Barden Bankers on Government Street. Well, the next morning we sat down and they told me why they would not come to Victoria and that was because they had been stopped six times with aggressive panhandling between the Barden Bankers and my hotel and that they were not willing to subject their delegates to that. True story. So anyway, you heard some passion there. Um, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, back to the Maritimes on the other side of the country, um, we founded something that's called the Homeless Hotel. And the Homeless Hotel was just very simple. We just got a bunch of good doers in the community with deep pockets. Uh, there was a, uh, an area uh, where housing was uh, pretty much falling apart. Travelers in. We uh, got uh, a lot of the uh, different... Uh, um, We've got a lot of the different uh, municipal uh, political, uh, uh, you know, willingness, um, you know, aligned properly. So we rally political support, as I know now it's called in the Don, Don Kaplan course. Um, and um, what uh, we did there was that we were able to basically hire people in different organizations. I was one of them. I was hiring homeless people, giving them a uniform and a salary and an advance so they could go and stay in these houses at that housing and basically follow some rules and then after that you know uh, we had a 98.6 percent uh, one person didn't, didn't make it but everybody else did and we turned home uh, Claudette Bradshaw at the time told me that we were turning homeless people in taxpayers she was quite happy with that um, so that was all part of what we did there, um, and the Homeless Hotel itself was an event. It was a 24-hour event in a park downtown Moncton that we did during late spring when it was still cold. And then basically I was going to corporations saying, you should buy a room in my hotel. It's $1,000, okay? And uh, you know, what you get for that is a swatch of, of, of space here in the park, and you can bring your tent and tent there and uh, basically uh, five people per room, you know, uh, that's what it is. And, uh, you know, I'd like you guys to consider this as a team building activity. Well, that thing just caught on fire, you know, and uh, it worked. So we raised hundreds of thousands of dollars towards that. And press got into it and this and that. And Delta, da -da 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 -da. Delta, da -da -da -da. Delta, right, you see? And then that's, that's what happened out there. So all of a sudden, you know, we were signing business left, right, and center. And my point here is that, you know, there are other levers than core management strategies to achieve success. And that's what I learned at the Delta Beau Sejour there. Um, and the phone rang. And um, I got a call from a, a VP uh, with Fairmont Hotels. He left me a message basically saying that, you know, can you please call me back? And I was a little, you know, I thought to myself, well, the owners are probably coming. They want us to unroll the red carpets here in the Maritimes and impress them. And he wants to make sure we do a good job. And I was a little, you know, disillusioned. But anyway, so I returned the call to find a wonderful man named Richard Payette, uh, regional vice president for Fairmont Hotels, Eastern Canada. And uh, I was uh, asked to take over Fairmount of Queen Elizabeth in Montreal. Um, largest hotel of the province of Quebec, um, 1,047 rooms, 100 suites, 50,000 square feet of banquet and meeting space. Four